Welcome to the post California Hot Rod Reunion edition of the Top Fuel Insider. Uh, we have just gotten back from Famoso Raceway to see yet another uh, stellar uh, race. And the Top Fuel stuff was uh, pretty darn exciting. Let's start this podcast um, where the season ended, which is where the season began. Uh, Bartone, once again. Low ET, top speed, and uh, top eliminator, winning five races in a row, uh, complete and uh, utter perfection. Uh, with that being said, you know, there's a saying in um, poker that you're never as good as your best win, and you're never as bad as your worst beat. So uh, let's get to the bad, those who suffered the worst. It happens to be the champion speed shop car. Um, in fact, didn't qualify, which is no mean feat because it was a short field. Uh, it was a 16 car eliminator and uh, there are 15 cars on the premises and 13 were actually allowed to compete. Champion not being among those um, with uh, two attempts to get in the show uh, they kind of bongoed both of them. On the first one, uh, you know, there was a fuel leak on the starting line and uh, they were shut off so they didn't take a time. Didn't get a time. Uh, next day, Saturday, last session of qualifying, um, the car looked good. It was pretty much marching and uh, uh, driver Adam Sorokin clicked it early and posted a 591 which, you know, put would have put him in, you know, the middle of the field. And, uh, Unfortunately, they kicked a rod out and trucks rolled. That's the rule when uh, they roll the safety trucks or the cleanup uh, crew, uh, your run is negated. So they did not get a time. There was no time allowed. And uh, that meant that they were a DQ. So anyway, with that being said, uh, you know, the fuelers actually put on a pretty stellar show, uh, but we all knew where it was going. Um, off the trailer, Bartone posted a 563 at 247 miles an hour. And yeah, I mean, you know, the gauntlet was thrown down once again. And so who's going to get it together enough to upend the, uh, this person who's just been completely uh, dominating the eliminator? Uh, by the time the dust settled Saturday, Rick White had stepped up, 572 at 241 mile an hour. Bill Dunlap with a 577, uh, Jim Young in uh, Steve Harwood's Nitro Hemi from Utah, 579. Rick McGee was number five, with a, also with a 579. And so that's fine, but those guys are a tenth and a half behind Rick. A tenth to a tenth and a half behind. And uh, nobody through the course of the Eliminator, of course, was able to take it to the next level. Rick White did a tremendous job of getting close, <laughs> you know, and I think in his semifinal he had a, a fairly nasty uh, a blower explosion, and uh, they had a lot of work between the semifinals and the finals. Uh, it was such a thrash, I think that he might have been rattled a little bit, and in the final round uh, he went in deep. I don't know that he meant to do that and ultimately red lit and, and then it's done and, and Bartone wins. But, you know, the thing that has to be acknowledged is that Bartone not just won again and went undefeated for the season. He uh, also once again set low, e, low ET and top speed. With uh, aggregate numbers of 563 at uh, 256. What are you going to do? You have to acknowledge that the interloper from New York City, Tony Bartol, who was put in all those miles uh, to race in the West Coast and uh, the Northwest and, in, and then, you know, the Northeast, etc. But he hit every event and he killed it at every one of those. Um, you have to acknowledge that his domination is ultimately good for the class. It's good for the sport. It's good for the heritage series. And this domination is good. In the same way that when Michael Jordan ran uh, 
rose to prominence with the Chicago Bulls in the 90s, and whether you were a basketball fan or not, you knew what that was, you followed it. Um, Lance Armstrong, you know, the Tour de France in the 2000s, even though he was stripped of the seven titles, he won seven titles and you had somebody you were following because you knew something was going on. Uh, you, you know, uh, uh, when Roland Leong and, and Don Perdome won every race two years in a row in Top Fuel back in uh, 65 and 66, you just go, okay, there's something going on here, I need to acknowledge this. And that was what is Bartone and his crew, his entire operation, uh, Steve Box and, and the rest of the guys, have brought to this class and they've injected life into it. And, you know, maybe they might have saved it. Uh, a couple years ago, this class was in s kind of dire straits. Uh, participation was down. Um, Oil was just an epidemic, it, it was a nightmare, uh, that's been calmed down, but as things got stabilized, Bartone really hit his stride, and now, you know, love him, not love him, like what they're about, don't like what they're about, when they pull up, you go, okay, let's see if he can keep doing it, or is somebody finally going to stop this guy? Anyway, I maintain it's absolute great and uh, bodes well for uh, next season. And we will see how 2015 shakes out. But uh, like I say, I feel the eliminator, the class, front engine top fuel, heritage series top fuel, double A fuel dragsters, nostalgia top fuel, whatever you want to call this class, it has ended the season on a high note. Until next year, this has been the Top Field Insider looking forward to what promises to be a great season in 2015. I highly recommend you make your way to the March meet to see Bartone come back and see somebody else put a stop to this. He will no longer be inexorable. He'll still be an interloper. <laughs>